Thanks, Robin. So, as Natalie said, I want to continue the theme and I want to give you a success story. Um, I'm going to talk about the Marine Reserve Network on the Great Barrier Reef because it provides a globally significant demonstration of the benefits of these marine reserves. <clears throat> so, in 2004, the Great Barrier Reef was rezoned to create the world's largest network of marine protected areas, of highly protected marine reserves. And in doing so, it created a global standard for best practice in the design and implementation of marine reserves and the rigorous and accountable, the application of rigorous and accountable principles of conservation science. Now put that together with the very large area of the Great Barrier Reef and it provides us with a unique opportunity five years later to review and synthesize the outcomes of having those marine reserves. So last year, along with 21 of my colleagues, leading scientists from the Great Barrier Reef, we did such a synthesis and review. The results were published in the um, United States Scientific Journal, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and I'll give you a quick overview of what we found in terms of the outcomes. The first one is that, as Natalie said, there are more bigger fish. Now, there's clear widespread evidence for that and for long-term benefits. And I'm referring here to the types, the species of fish that are actually targeted by fishing. But there's a couple of other important points to make. First, as Natalie said, it takes very good compliance and enforcement. It only actually requires a relatively small amount of illegal fishing to reduce those benefits quite markedly. And the second point that emerged is that it seems that there is quite widespread depletion of some of these fish populations across much of the Great Barrier Reef. And that depletion had occurred by as early as 1984. Uh, now I mentioned that there are not only more abundant fish, but they're bigger. And that's really important because as Natalie said, bigger fish have more babies. They have more fish larvae. And that becomes really important in the context of marine reserves because it shows that not only are marine reserves having a benefit within an isolated individual reserve, but those benefits get transferred to other coral reefs by transport of these fish larvae from one reef to another. And that's really important because it means that the, the reserve system starts to act as a network of reserves and networks tend to be much more resilient to disturbances or changes or threats than individual isolated reserves. And the other very exciting thing is that those larvae get from those big fish in the reserve area get transferred not only to other protected reefs but they get transferred to the entire ecosystem so that we're seeing benefits from those big fish in the reserves to the whole of the ecosystem and importantly to the reefs that are still being fished. So we're getting benefits for the environment and probably it benefits for fisheries. Okay, so that's all about the direct effects of not fishing in, in particular areas, but there's also very important indirect effects. And one of the most important we found is that it seems that the outbreaks of the coral-eating crown of thorn starfish, you see on the left there, your left, um, Outbreaks of the coral eating crown of thorn starfish appear to be less frequent on the reefs that have been protected from fishing than on the reefs that are left open to fishing. That's really important because when you have less outbreaks of crown of thorn starfish, you have more coral during the outbreak periods on those reefs. And of course, corals are not only the building blocks of the entire coral reef ecosystem, but they are also the foundation of the economy of the Great Barrier Reef. Let's just have a look at that for a second. Access Economics, a leading economic consulting firm, recently estimated that the Great Barrier Reef brings in about five and a half billion dollars per year and 54,000 jobs to the Australian economy. Mostly from tourism, but also from fishing. Both of which depend absolutely on a healthy ecosystem for their viability. It's also worth doing a quick comparison of that huge amount of income from the reef with what it costs to protect the Great Barrier Reef. For example, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, the annual budget is approximately, sorry, is less than 0.7 
of 1% of the estimated revenue from the park. And even the structural adjustment package that was brought in to help the fishing sectors adjust to the changes brought in by the zoning plan, even that entire package amounts to less than 4% of one year's estimated revenue. So it's sounding like a pretty good investment. So I'll quickly wrap up then. The marine reserve network on the Great Barrier Reef seems to be bringing significant ecosystem benefits. It's probably having benefits for fisheries and it's proving very cost effective. That's a good news story, but I need to temper it by pointing out that there are a lot of remaining threats to the future of the Great Barrier Reef and an effective marine reserve network can only be one part of the integrated package of complementary management strategies that we need to protect the Great Barrier Reef into the future. Well. <laughs>